What's up guys, Adonis Paul here with some more pretty big Season 3 news for Cobra Kai. As always, spoiler alert, well, possible spoiler alert, is we're going to be talking about some information from the cast and creators that is starting to paint a fuller picture for us as to what Season 3 has to offer. Now obviously, the cast can't confirm everything for us, but if you watch enough interviews and the right Twitter accounts, we can make some rather educated guesses here. So what do we know at this point? We know that Daniel will be traveling to Okinawa. The season is going to start with either a flash forward or an interview regarding the All Valley Tournament, most likely giving us a third person rundown of the plot thus far, and some new information to bring us up to speed. And we know that Chosen has gained the shrine from the Karate Kid cartoon, making it and all of their global adventures canon now. Okay, I take that part back. That was just an Easter egg. And as long as we're here, let's get one thing out of the way right now. Terry Silver is not Tori's father. You are not. <laughs> get that crap out of your head. Look, I love a good theory as much as any of us do. I'm doing a video on one right now. But this is a step too far. Enough is enough. Cobra Kai is not Star Wars. Not everyone is going to have some tie-in to the old saga lineage. Stop this nonsense. It's foolishness. Terry Silver is Tori's father has become the new Daniel is the real bully. First of all, even though Ralph Macchio might be older than Thomas Ian Griffith in real life, in the Karate Kid universe, Terry Silver is Kreese's age. Quick math to ruin your theory. Let's say Terry Silver was in the Marine Corps before the Army, and he was the first man to step foot on Red Beach. He would have had to be 18 by March 8th, 1965. If he arrived the last day of aggression in the war, like that's when he showed up in Nam, he would be 18 in 1975. This man would be in his mid-70s, late 60s at best. He might be Tori's grandfather, but I doubt that he's her dad still siring kids in his 50s. Still, at best, 60s at worst. I'll accept the theory that he hooks up with Yaya or something. Because as we all know, Yaya is the complete unsung hero from this series. The absolute unit. She cooks meals with multiple milks. She gets high before tournaments, and she doesn't snitch when the school calls. Yaya rules. And if you mess with her when she tells you her house is not a sweatshop and try to guilt her into making you a Deadpool costume, she'll send you out like this. You coming home a man to Yaya's house. Yaya deserves better. So just getting that out of the way. This isn't Star Wars. There probably won't be some Terry Silver is Tori's dad reveal. And if you really do buy into that, you might as well start waiting for Palpatine to come back into the series as well. Now. Cobra Kai and the Star Wars saga are shaking up to have some pretty weird similarities. In a good way, not in a Ryan Johnson way. But that's a whole other video I'm thinking about making. Today, we're here to discuss who is going to die in Season 3. I just want to get that Terry Silver thing out of the way. And also, just to get one last thing out of the way, I will not be accepting any responses or retorts to that statement above that do not start with the admission that Yaya is the absolute unit, truly the only woman worthy of Terry Silver. Okay, so who dies? On September the 18th, during a Q&A, the question was asked, is somebody going to die in season three? To which Hayden Schlossberg replied, I can confirm that at least three people die in season three. Now that's a pretty big statement, so let's autistically dissect it a little bit. First off, let's clear the table of people we know aren't going to die. Daniel, Johnny, Miguel. Yes, I know he's in mortal peril right now, but they aren't gonna go offing main characters in the third season. Robbie is safe, Tori is safe, Sam's gonna be okay, we know Aisha got canned so we won't be seeing any of her dead or alive so she's safe. In fact, all the kids, no Miyagi-Do or Cobra Kai students are gonna die. Mary Mauser's even out there talking in interviews about how the story's gonna revolve around the relationship drama between her and Tori and Miguel, so we know that they're all in. I just don't see that happening. These writers will take a lot of risks and the risks pay off but they're not just gonna go killing a child. That might be a little bit of a buzzkill. Stingray is safe because what do we gain or lose with his death at all? His death would be a shrug at best. Joey? Hopefully, but probably not. But there is a LaRusso who is both useless and the fans hate every time she's on screen. Sam. Nope, no, I'm sorry, I already said she's safe. Miss LaRusso. Daniel's gonna need to lose something to push him and his mom would probably be a great fit for that. 
it gives the main character motivation beyond what he already had completely useless fans don't really care about her one way or another she's the right age to just die off screen miss larusso is out dead you are the weakest link in cobra kai goodbye and like i was saying frankly daniel's character needs something bad to happen to him even at the end of season two he's crying about his wife not allowing him to do karate anymore and that's the worst of it for him yeah, his daughter got in a fight at school, but what did he really lose? Johnny's student is paralyzed. He lost his dojo, disavowed his own father, lost all of his students, his love interest, even ditched his car. Things are a bit uneven here, and LaRusso's character needs to be humbled before we end up actually hating Daniel LaRusso. At least, if I was a writer, that would be my mindset. So the first victim of season three, and everyone cheer with me, Miss LaRusso, you're out. Now, victim number two, and I can't be too specific here because this one's going to be a character we haven't met yet, or in a while at least. I mean, come on, if three people that we knew were going to bite it, no way Hayden would have let that slip. So I'm going to go with one of three possible choices we will meet in Okinawa. Number one, of course, Chosen. We already know he's going to be there. How? I don't know. I know it won't be from Daniel killing him in a fight. For one reason, he can't. Another reason would be, that would be a lot like Batman killing someone. That changes the canon. You, you don't come back from that. So Chosen is safe. And awesome. But for our purposes here, just safe. Possibility number two out of the Japanese League, Kumiko. I stand firm that Tamlin Tomita is coming back as Kumiko. I speculate that Amanda and Daniel will separate and he will have to struggle between his love for his wife and his love for Kumiko. I mean, if they're still simping for Allie with an eye all these years later, you know Daniel's still got a soft spot at least for Kumiko. So strong possibility here. If she dies, he also has a reason to go back to his wife and not stay with her. Traditional Asian woman deaths in film include the following. Cancer, seppuku, typhoons, atomic bombs, being thrown off a cliff by bad guys, ninja attack, and of course, Hattori Hanzo swords. Please take your pick and apply it to the theory. And a surprise spoiler entry, my personal pick the little bell ringer girl Daniel saved from the typhoon. Now, hear me out. I'm not being funny here. I'm dead serious. This is my pick for number two. I put on Twitter a while back that I believe she'll return. If I were the writers, it would be a great surprise right in for the audience. Nobody ever thinks of her. And her and Daniel are only like six years apart. So that's a lot when she's 11 and he's 17. But now they're both in their 50s. This could work out. And due to him having saved her and her village from certain destruction as a child, it's not a big stretch to assume she probably kind of idolizes him. Only to die. Cancer, Fukushima fallout, who knows? But this status did get a like from Hayden Schlossberg. Then he unliked it. Now it is possible he just scrolled down my feed and realized that I'm unlikable and he doesn't want to be associated with me. I completely understand that if so. Or, just maybe, he had second thoughts about liking such a bullseye guess. So don't count it out. And those are my reasons that Little Bell Ringer Girl is going to be my Japanese pick for the Cobra Kai death in Season 3. So that's really as specific as I can get for number 2, a Japanese person. But a Japanese person we love, one of the big three, Kumiko, Chosen, or Tracy Taguchi, who played the girl Bell Ringer. Not joking, that's her credit. And that leaves us with big number 3. And let's start thinking like writers here. Who does the audience really want to see dead? We're going to take away a couple of characters we're going to be sad to kill, but what about somebody the audience can cheer for dying? Hillary Swank. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Even though that would be awesome. John Kreese? Maybe. It might be time to move the story past him, but we don't know how far into the future Season 3 is going to take us. Let's assume they want to get six seasons out of Cobra Kai. Killing off Kreese seems more of a late game decision than one I would make right now even though it would provide the perfect opportunity for Terry Silver to return, as Silver is kind of the Emperor to Kreese's Darth Vader for all you Star Wars Cobra Kai fans. But for now, let's mark him mostly safe. What about Robbie's mom? I mean, she's a drunk and a crappy person that nobody would miss. Might be a little much to kill off two moms, but remember, this is Karate Kid lore. Different but same is a running theme in this universe. That's actually what's on the second scroll, so I guess that's possible. This would also force Robbie back to the LaRussos because Come on, Johnny's second day as a dad and the kid almost murders somebody at school. So that definite maybe for Robbie's mom. She has all the characteristics for a character kill-off. She's unlikable, useless baggage on the set, probably overpaid, nothing you can really do to redeem her. And yeah, I know she's in rehab or whatever, but relapses happen all the time. 
And the fourth big sign that somebody's gonna die in a movie, an easy and convenient way she can die off screen for free. Definite maybe for Robbie's mom. What about Yaya? I mean, she's old, but I say no. I won't even entertain that Yaya can die. I'm sticking with my theory that she ends up with Terry Silver because she is the only woman deserving of that man god. All these possibilities. But who is my pick for who's gonna bite it in season three? If we already know the character, I say it's gonna be Johnny's stepdad. I think in season three, we're gonna see a total reversal of LaRusso and Lawrence at one point. Where Johnny lost his mom years ago, LaRusso's gonna lose his mom now. Where Johnny faced the death of a student, Daniel's gonna lose a Japanese friend, which is the worst thing that can happen to a weed. Where LaRusso was rich and powerful and had it all together, then lost it, Johnny will see the opposite, where he inherits a ton of money and spends half a season drinking it all away. But nonetheless, we never hear of any siblings. When Johnny's stepdad dies, who do you think's gonna get all that Lorimar money? I really do think that Johnny's stepfather will be the third death. He's old, already in nursing care, he's an evil, decrepit piece of garbage, but deep down, Johnny really did crave his respect. He sought out an assassin to train him in the way of the fist because he wanted a father so bad. And also, where do you think they're gonna get all that money it's gonna take to rehab Miguel? Miguel's family is broke, they can't even buy a Deadpool costume. And Allie with an eye does not come cheap as a surgeon. She's a terrible person, we know that, see my last video about it. I mean really, we won't know until season 3. But Miss LaRusso, Johnny's stepdad, and I'm gonna go with Little Bell Girl from the Village are my picks for our season 3 deaths. Or there'll be a hurricane that just kills 3 random people, who knows? But these theories are fun to make, so if you like them, please subscribe to this channel for more. And if you have any different ideas about who's gonna die in season 3, let me know in the comments below. Until next time, Cobras, no mercy.